Hi there. Uh, in this video, I'll be continuing to fix some unit tests at random. Um, I'm not preparing ahead of time what the tests are, so I'll just kind of see what's failing and hopefully fixing it is useful to, um, to you guys watching at home. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, well, actually, before, before just running through the tests and seeing what comes up, I want to quickly show you something that's newly been added. Um, to the uh, repository, which is this file called functional um, tests dashboard. The name might change, the structure might change, but basically we now have a dashboard where we can see all the tests that are failing and for which backend. Um, we will eventually have this for the stateful API as well. We'll have it then eventually for each front end API and even each version of each framework and so on. But um, you know that's gonna come in the future. For now, we just have it uh, for the functional API and for each of the backend frameworks that we're testing for at the moment. Um, so this can give us a good idea of what we should try to test to get things working. Um, layers would be a good thing to fix, although I know that this is a bit complicated and, and there's people working on this, so I'm gonna avoid this for now. Um, basically kind of adding convolutions for NumPy and, and frameworks that don't natively support them is a bit of a challenge, obviously. There's a lot of compositional kind of using the existing functions to recreate convolutional behavior. Um, so probably a little bit much for, um, for these quick videos. Um, yeah, but actually I'm just gonna follow the, the normal approach and just see what comes up first. Um, but this is another way you could do it. You could, if you wanted to, just start running random jacks and running random TensorFlow if you wanted to kind of very quickly get to um, a test that you know is gonna be failing somewhere. Um, so yeah, just wanted to make a point about this, but I'm gonna do what we normally do, which is just to do functional, um, I'll do functional core, so not the neural network functions. Let's try and get those working first. Um, okay, and let's just see what comes up first. And again, there are a few that we know about, I'm not sure if log space is one that we have witnessed a problem with before. Um, Okay, that's one I'm not familiar with. This seems like possibly a new error. So let's take a look at this and work out what's going on here. Log space TensorFlow, what's going on here? Um, yeah, so when we run it now, it should just have one. So, falsify an example. The data type is this start and stop. Um, let's work out what's going on. Again, this is my way of just making sure we, we get to this line at the point at which it fails and then can kind of interactively debug. Okay, so we have our answer, which is just zero. We have an empty data type, so um, something has gone wrong. Uh, the data type should be wrapped um, and should be provided to us automatically. So let's see then. So this is um, log space, functional IV, it's creation, the log space. Yeah, we just don't have inferred data type. I don't know why, maybe just a typo. Um, I mean, because just for example, I mean, I suppose with lint space, we do have it. We have inferred data type and inferred device, whereas in log space, we don't. So just a typo, I guess, and that should hopefully be a pretty easy fix. I'll take this out and just see if it passes. OK, 
Okay, still doesn't pass, um, but the error looked different, so that's a sign of progress. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe it doesn't even... So it doesn't support data type. So why are we trying it in the TensorFlow log space? Ah, uh, I see. Um, it's because we're calling it internally. It doesn't support data type. So, I mean, we just get rid of this. I don't know why we're doing that. Mm, wait, hang on. We sh we, they should be consistent. So let's have a look. Array, API standard. Maybe neither are there. It might be the case that Linspace does support data type. Device, it does support data type. And Logspace, is that in the standard? It might not be. No, Logspace isn't there. So I think what's probably happened here is that we had log space before we adhered to the standard. We also had lin space, and at the time where we first implemented them, we didn't add a data type argument to them. So I suppose now lin space has been updated to include the data type argument. Log space has not been, and we should add it to log space just because they should be consistent with lin space. Um, it just makes sense. Um, but there's no standard explicitly telling us that we need it for log space, so we didn't add it, and we've kind of got this problem now where log space doesn't have it, but for some reason we've put data type equals none. But, but in reality, log space and lin space should do, deal with this in the same manner. So um, let's just do this, above data type, sorry, above device. Um, this should also be provided at this by this point in time. I mean, we should also be doing out. Um, um, should we? So, uh, we should handle this here, I think, because we do handle it in lin space, or do we not? Maybe we don't handle it here either. No, we don't. So, that's correct. We just ignore out in both cases, and it's being handled by the decorator. Um, that's fine. Um, yeah, so that's good. The only thing is, we're going to need to add this into each backend. So backend, Jax, creation, log space. Um, again, let's find lin space first. Data type should go above device. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. Uh, but we should also then handle data types. So a bit of shuffling required to the device. device. Okay, we just cast like this. Again, this is not right. If data type is, data type isn't none. So I'm just going to get rid of this as well. Just a couple of things here and there that I'm spotting up mistakes. Um, so we then just pass the data type into JNP lin space. Presumably, therefore, um, JNP log space also supports data type. It does. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. Want to get them in the right order of the OCD, but it goes between base and axis, so yeah, let's put it here. Okay, um, so that's Jax handling data type correctly. Um, now let's do M. I mean, we're not even testing for MXNet at the moment, and we're probably going to remove this support, um, but. Um, Let's just add it anyway. Actually, let's not. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. We're not supporting MXNet. So let's do it for uh, NumPy. Maybe in future we'll get MXNet up to speed as well. Uh, but at the moment we're focusing on the other four. Um, 
So creation, again, def lin space. So we want to be doing this. We want to be doing it at the device. And we want to be, so again, we have NumPy log space. I can be pretty sure this supports it because Jax just adheres to this API anyway. So that is correct. So now we have, we've just already done TensorFlow. So this is already handled. We're actually just using, we should actually be using the IV. Um, although in this case, it's, yeah, I mean, technically we should always be using IV's namespace to call a function. Uh, and that's the best way of doing it consistently. In this case, it would work fine because we have already um, evaluated data type and device. Um, so it's not going to be a problem that we we don't have these kind of handling decorators. Um, but still, I think we should always be doing it via IV. Um, it's just more robust as a general rule. Um, okay, so that's TensorFlow. And again, sorry, the difference being that if we just call the lin space that's defined in this module, we're calling this um, completely unmodified, whereas if we call it from IV namespace, then we have all of the decorators that we apply to the functions and so on, um, which is just kind of the most robust way of calling the function, because then we have all this kind of extra handling code for cases where data type is non or device is non, and we get the default. Although in this case, it won't be, this won't be a problem because we will have called this function itself from the IV namespace. But anyway, just thought I'd be consistent with using IV to always call other functions. Um, so torch creation def lin space. Um, we want the data type, presumably it's at the bottom again. And then again, we're going to use this. We're going to actually pass this in here. We should call this using Ivy again. Um, yeah. Again, default device, is this not a IV function? It is, so again, we should be doing this with IV. Um, yeah, there's a, all of these should be done with IV. Again, this is another just um, thing that's due to be changed across the code base. So just doing it here and there is, is fine. Um, but eventually this is something that we're gonna need to do kind of project wide. Um, Okay, so I think that's all the back ends correct. Now we just need to update IV as well. Um, uh, so, uh, we also need to get the arguments correct. Um, but again, this is something that we can do at another point in time. Right now, this is a unit test fixing video, so that's what I'm gonna do. Def log space. Um, I've already forgotten to go after device, before device. It's keyword only, so it doesn't actually strictly matter, but af uh, before device. Is that what it's doing in all of them? No. <laughs> um, again, these should really be consistent. Uh, the word it for space is data type device out. So it should really be data type device out, I think. Log space. Data type device out. Um, so we call it like this. Data type device out. Same with lin space. Data type device out. Again, it doesn't really matter, but I mean, we should have it just for the, we should have them aligned so it's definitely cleaner to do it this way. Okay, if lin space is wrong, I won't fix that because that's kind of irrelevant to this. Again, unit test fix video. We're not even, but I think this is actually correct. It was probably just me getting it wrong on a few of them. Um, yeah, anyway, that's fine. Uh, so let's test it again. Okay, it looks good. Um, let's make sure it works with everything else as well. OK, 
Okay, awesome, it does. So I'll now get that added. Um, again, because there's quite a lot of changes, I'll do it incrementally just to make sure. Yeah, we removed that redundant piece of logic. We did this, we did this for NumPy, we did this for TensorFlow. Uh, we did this for Torch. We added the decorator, now that we've added the new argument and passing it into the back end, and that's everything. So, um, modified log space to also include the data type argument and fix the failing, fixing, uh, fixing the failing unit test. Okay, all good. Okay, I think that's good length actually. I think keeping these videos quite concise and to the point is probably, probably the best way of doing it. So that'll do for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.